for PRs this week. I saw two new ones. Um, oh, sorry, uh, two closed ones. Not, not any new ones, although I think at least one of these uh, is new as well as being closed. Uh, so that one is uh, in Crimson, the C store journaling code, uh, moving buffer lists to reduce the amount of memory copies uh, by Shuihan. Um, that was a new PR this week and was also merged right away. So uh, they get nice fast turnover times. They get to work on uh, much more development oriented code right now. So that one is in. And um, then the other closed PR was uh, in RGW. There was this uh, uh, Deos uh, back end glue code that uh, was submitted, which is kind of interesting. It would potentially let RGW run on top of Deos, uh, which is kind of like a, the, the successor to Luster in a way. Uh, I don't exactly know what their relationship is like now since uh, Intel, I think, sold off most of their, their Luster uh, assets to uh, DDN, and, but they kept Deos. So uh, I don't know what their relationship is like now, but in any event, um, this PR was going to do that, and it sounds like the author now has closed it in favor of a new PR that I assume uses a, a, a better library or a newer version of the library for, for Deos. So um, we'll, we'll see when and if a new PR comes out for that. Um, I saw three updated PRs this week. Uh, this first one is uh, adding primary balance scoring to the balancer uh, from Josh Solomon. That, that showed up, I think, last week. And uh, there's just been uh, some review and discussion. I think Radic and, and Laura have been reviewing it. So uh, that's in the works. Next, uh, this boost val grind, uh, uh, CMake change. Um, lots more discussion on that. Kefu had a couple of comments uh, that I believe have all been addressed. Um, I think that now basically is ready to move forward. Uh, I don't. I don't think there. Are, I didn't see any additional concerns on it. And then finally, um, Igor, your your PR for getting rid of statusfs updates on each transaction. It looks like that's been added to WIP URI testing. So hopefully, hopefully we can merge it soon. Yeah. And, uh, and that is what I saw for, for PRs this week. I didn't quite make it to, through the end of the list, but I, I suspect there probably wasn't anything in the last like 10 here that, that changed this week. So, uh, if, if there was probably only closed by the bot. So, uh, did I miss anything uh, this week from anybody? Okay, well then moving on. Um, the only discussion topic I have this week is that um, on the, the Tombstone, RocksDB Tombstone removal project, uh, Adam had made a suggestion uh, when I spoke to him last week that maybe we should try to see if we can modify RocksDB itself to issue memtable flushes when we see um, a certain number of tombstones during iteration like they do with compaction. So I went and looked through some of the RocksDB code that does this. And um, kind of the gist of it is I, I don't think it would be necessarily super straightforward and easy to do. Uh, it might not be bad, but it's it's um, it's definitely not like an easy, easy uh, thing to implement. Right now, um, there's a couple of things. This code that they currently have only works for delete tombstones and not delete range tombstones. So that's one kind of strike against even even using this for compaction, uh, which is you know what it's for at the moment. Um, but then also, what the code does is basically just sets a flag that is read by some kind of background compaction thing uh, to know that uh, a compaction should happen. 
So it's not like you're doing a direct triggering of compaction when you hit a certain number of tombstones during iteration. It's just that you, you set a flight to asynchronously later on go do uh, compaction whenever whenever that other part of the code gets around to looking at it. Um, the, the gist of it is that most of the work is actually being done in the compaction part of the code, this, this thing that manages it. So I didn't see evidence that there's quite the same infrastructure on the memtable flush side of this. Uh, there might be, maybe I just missed it, but um, but we'd have to do something similar or we'd set a flag that, that we should flush. But it's kind of weird because if you flush, you can actually trigger compaction on the other side. So we'd probably have to add some kind of thing in there to avoid like a cascading thing where we're trying to trigger compactions. Maybe it'd be fine if we're just setting that flag Maybe we just ignore it if you've already done compaction, but we don't want to have like have a competing cascading effect from the flushes and telling it that we want compactions at the same time, I think. So at the very least, we'd have to think about this, I think, kind of carefully and make sure we're not making it do really bad things. Um, all that combined, I'm basically back to thinking maybe the right place to do this is in our own KV layer um, where we can just track deletes and delete ranges and um, and manually issue the compaction or the flush ourselves when we see that we've issued a certain number of deletes. And that code, I believe, would be a lot simpler and easier to deal with than trying to do, like modify RocksDB and kind of slip in our own stuff there. So anyway, that's, that's where I'm at on that. Um, I'll probably talk to Adam more about it on Monday and see what he thinks that here today. Uh, but that, that's basically all I've got. Um, any thoughts or questions or comments on that, that stuff? All right. Well, then I'll open it up. I see Sam, you're here today. Any, anything interesting going on in Crimson these days? Here, but maybe not not with mic access. Okay, cool. All right. Well, um, anything else anyone wants to bring up this week? If not, we'll just have a short meeting today. All right. Well, then, thank you all for coming and. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy your week. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.